Hello, I'm Lucas, this is Bit of Lit, and it's Friday Fantasy, which means I will be going through and talking about another fantasy book. In this case, I chose a bit of a sequel. I read the 11th book in the Discworld series, and that book would be Reaper Man, which I highly recommend. I don't think I liked it quite as much as Mort, which is the first, or the fourth book, uh, the first that follows death. This is the second that follows death as the primary character. Uh, mostly because I was fully engaged in all the side, all the plot lines uh, with Mort and Princess Kelly and Death and you know some of the other characters here and there. Um, because, you know, it, it was funny and in, it was just really charming. Uh, but then there'd be moments where Death was legitimately sort of menacing and scary. Um... And I, I really loved those parts. Um, but in this one, uh, it, there are things I love more about this book, and I, I think the humor is uh, punched up a little higher. But uh, m the issue that I had was that I really only cared about the death plotline at a certain point, because uh, this, again, follows a bunch of different characters uh, going different places and doing different things to try to solve the problems in the book. But I find that some of the plot lines, uh, the wackiness and the, you know, the humor, it's, it's a little strong and I don't have an emotional connection to them like I do with Death when uh, he, in his scenes. And so let's just talk about him. I'll keep holding it here, I guess, so you have something other than me to look at. Uh, in this book, the auditors, who are these little beings who wear gray cloaks and <laughs> talk in the uh, talk as a collective, um, are afraid because, uh, for a reason, they are afraid that death and is uh, developing a bit of a personality and he's not able to do his job uh, effectively because he's death and you shouldn't have, you know, emotional attachments or anything like that. So they talk to Ezreal, the uh, death of the universe, and um, send him on his way. He, he's sort of on a uh, staycation as a living being, so to speak, because he now has an egg timer kind of thing, hourglass thing that shows how long he's got to live. And... Um, yeah, that causes all kinds of problems because death, his job, uh, if he's not there to take away the souls of the dead to wherever they're going to go, to reincarnation, to, you know, whatever, whatever it is that they imagine that will happen to them when they die, uh, then where do those sort of souls go? <laughs> and... Uh, you know, death is sent out and he goes to work as a farmhand. Uh, oh, here we go. He goes to work as a farmhand and be a reaper man, as we have the title here. And um, because of that, characters like Wendell Poon, uh, he's 130 and it's his birthday coming up. And he's about to be reincarnated and he's looking forward to it. But he his body gives out and he dies and he finds he's not seeing who he thinks he's going to see he doesn't see death because he's a wizard and wizards can see death um as well as cats and you know dead people <laughs> um but he's not seeing death so he well i guess i'll just go back to my body and that horrifies people and he has a whole bunch of hijinks with uh, his colleagues um, other species don't have the same issues necessarily. They sort of reconfigure a, an idea of death, uh, which makes them exist. For example, there is, uh, the death rat and the death flea and others that exist, but humans take a little bit longer. And, uh, another sort of 
plot line that's additional to all that is that uh, because of all this madness um, and all uh, no one is able to die for the humans at least there is this life force just building up of people that have passed on but they didn't unlike window plumes go back into their body instead their life force is going into inanimate objects and it feels like there's ghosts and poltergeist action going on and it's freaking everybody out meanwhile these little snow globe egg type things uh keep appearing and uh that's all i'm gonna say about that in terms of the plot it all comes together i find um window poons is really funny uh because he he joins this uh what is it called i wrote it down um fresh start club um <laughs> which is this like it's red it's led by um I didn't write it down, Reg Shu or Shu Reg or something like that. And uh, he's an undead rights activist. <laughs> and uh, he's, uh, Wendell Poons does this because he, he doesn't know what to do. Um, as a dead person, he can't, or as an undead person, he can't find joy in the same things uh, that he used to. And, and it's just, the book is really charming. It was really funny. And I love it. Um, but at a certain point, like when the, the snow globe things start becoming more and more impor important as a parasitic thing that's growing and growing, as well as the life force, um, I find m there's more humor in those parts, uh, and not a lot of emotional attachment on top of the humor. Whereas with death, when he is with Mrs. Flitworth working as a farmhand, and he's learning what it's like to um, feel what time feels like and knowing that you will die one day. Um, you know, there's funny moments with that, but there's also really tender moments and really uh, emotional moments. And you sort of feel his pain um, because we're, we will all die one day. <laughs> um, but he's experiencing it for the first time and he is the anthropomorphic personification of that idea and then a new death appears and he is quite dramatic um and it's just really crazy uh to give an idea of like some of the more serious moments in this uh when death is bill door i'll just read a short section um, which I've got highlighted here so that I could remember to read it. Um, this is about all I really want to say. Uh, it's a great book. You should read it. Um, let me just read it. Bill Dorr, this is about halfway through, so please forgive me. Bill Dorr reached back into his pocket and took out the timer again. Its hissing drowned out the roar of the flames. The future flowed into the past and there was a lot more past than there was future, but he was struck by the fact that what it flowed through all the time was now. And uh, yeah, it, it was kind of like, it hit me. Of course, um, yeah, you know, the, the time is now, the moment is now, and your life is fleeting away. <laughs> uh, so, best to enjoy it which he he does his best too and uh yeah i, I picked that quote because it shows his concern for time running out and sort of the emotional backbone of the whole thing with uh with all of that so yeah i stumbled my way through that next week hopefully we'll do a new series and then maybe again i'll return to the Discworld series, but I do have a lot of uh, catching up to do for work, for reading, for work. Uh, there's just a few books that I haven't read that I need to, and so, and I've got some resource books that I should be going through to learn how I can better teach my students that I will have soon. So, yeah, maybe there will be a week where I don't have a Friday Fantasy, but uh, yeah, I loved Mort. 
overall more, but the the moments with death here, I, I really loved. I thought they were, uh, they out, he outdid himself uh, far above and beyond what I could have expected uh, of the death character from Mort. So seeing him in Reaper Man was excellent, and that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Goodbye.